A few days ago, researchers discovered a number of flaws in WPA3. These flaws can be exploited to recover the password of the network, downgrade its security, and even launch denial of service attacks. This is Zaid from Zed Security, and in this video, I'm gonna walk you through everything that you need to know about these new discoveries. So, as we know, WPA2 has been considered the greatest in terms of Wi-Fi security for a very long time now. You probably already heard of WPA3 and how it's set to replace WPA2 because it's supposed to be more secure. Now, a few days ago, researchers Matthew Fanov and Eel Ronin published a research in which they analyzed WPA3 and the handshake used in it, the Dragonfly handshake, which replaces the vulnerable four-way handshake used in WPA2. In their research, they discovered a number of flaws that can allow hackers to launch a number of very powerful attacks against this latest and greatest Wi-Fi security protocol, WPA3. First of all, they discover two flaws that can be exploited to downgrade WPA3 to WPA2. Now, this is very dangerous because it means that hackers can use the existing tools and techniques for WPA cracking to crack the WPA key, and this key will be identical to the WPA3 key. This means that they'll be able to connect to the network, decrypt all of the data that gets sent, which means that they'll be able to see the usernames, the passwords, and launch all of the post-connection attacks that we already know and that I cover in my courses. The first downgrade method exploits the backward compatibility in WPA3. See, pretty much all devices that we have right now don't support WPA3. Therefore, to make the transition from WPA2 to WPA3 smoother, WPA3 networks allow devices that don't support WPA3 to connect using WPA2. Now, this is a great feature that we all need, but the problem is it's not implemented in a very secure manner. Therefore, hackers can use a rogue access point to force devices that support WPA3 to connect over WPA2. And like I said, when this happens, they can use all of the methods and techniques that we already know to crack the WPA2 key, connect, and do all of the attacks that they already know. Not only that, but they also discovered a number of device-specific flaws that can be exploited to force devices that support WPA3 to connect over WPA2, even if they're connecting to a WPA3-only network. An example of these devices is the new Samsung Galaxy S10, but more devices can be vulnerable to this. The second downgrade method exploits the Dragonfly handshake itself, the handshake used in WPA3. See, when a device wants to connect to a WPA3 network, it sends a commit frame to the network indicating the security group it wants to use. Now guess what? Hackers can impersonate an access point and tell the client that is trying to connect that I don't support this security group, use a different one, and the client will use a different one. And once they use a lower security group, like I said, hackers will be able to use the methods and the tools that they already know to get the key. Other than these two downgrade methods, the researchers have also discovered two flaws that can be used to recover the password using a brute force or a dictionary attack. These methods are in the Dragonfly handshake, like I said, the handshake used in WPA3, and according to the researchers, hackers can guess all possible passwords of eight small letters with $125 worth of resources. The first recovery method is timing-based and determines whether a password is correct or not based on the time taken by the access point to respond to commit frames. 
The second method relies on comparing the memory access pattern generated by a password to the pattern generated when creating the commit frame by a computer that already has the password. Therefore, for this to work, hackers need to get information from a computer that already has the password, so they need to already have access to that computer. But the researchers have also said that the hackers might be able to get all of the information they need using JavaScript code. Now we all know that JavaScript is a client-side language that pretty much all browsers these days support. Therefore, if this is true, then hackers will be able to get this information easily using social engineering or by exploiting an XSS vulnerability. Last but not least, the researchers have also discovered that processing and responding to commit frames is computationally heavy and takes a lot of resources. Therefore, they were able to overload access points that use WPA3 with as little as 16 commit frames. This will cause the access point to restart, shut down, or just stop responding. Now you might think that this is not useful, but it can be very useful in a social engineering attack or in an evil twin attack where hackers would prevent clients from connecting to their network and create a fake network, get the clients to connect to this evil twin fake network and then steal the password using that network or steal other information by luring the targets to do other things once they connect. Now, the handshake that was analyzed, the Dragonfly handshake, is not only used in WPA3, it's also used in PEAP PWD networks. Therefore, because these networks use the same handshake, they'll be vulnerable to all of the vulnerabilities the Dragonfly handshake is vulnerable to. Not only that, but in PEAP PWD, clients have to enter a username and a password to connect. The researchers have discovered a number of implementation flaws that would allow hackers to connect to these networks using a valid username only without the need for a password. This will mean that hackers will be able to impersonate any user in these networks and gain access to the network and see the traffic unencrypted, like I said. Now, I know all of this sounds very scary, but the researchers have already informed the Wi-Fi Alliance about all of these vulnerabilities and vendors are already working on patches. For more information about these vulnerabilities, I highly recommend reading the full research paper. I'm going to link it in the description of this video and I'm also going to link a number of tools that the researchers have published which you can use to test whether your network is vulnerable or not. Finally, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel to stay updated with the latest in the cybersecurity world.